Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this masterclass series. This episode is the final episode for this season of masterclass. So in the first episode of the season, we talked about incident management. Then we saw how you could deliver excellent service services with Service Desk Plus. Then we saw how you could perfect your change enablement process. As the next step in this final episode, we'll see how you could build a resilient IT asset management process with Service Desk Plus. Thank you for kindly waiting for uh, for all the attendees to join in. I'm Zafan and I'll be taking you through today's masterclass discussion. All right, now let's see what we have in store for today. This would be our agenda. So first we'll see how you could discover and manage your IT asset inventory, how you could have a central grip of all your IT and non-IT assets and the various ways in which you could discover them and bring into your system of service desk, uh, which is service desk plus. Then we'll see how you could monitor their performance and stay compliant. Essentially staying compliant uh, also helps you face your audits like a boss. You can sail through your audits easily. And next up, we'll see how you could handle your consumables and your replenishable assets. And many, uh, many times IT, IT uh, stores sometimes uh, remain empty handed to any asset request, some frequently asked asset requests, and it might seem like a bad idea. So it's always uh, best to have a grip on all the assets that are in store. This includes consumables like toners and printers and all the other replenishables as well. We'll take a look at how you could configure that. Then we'll finally see how you could establish a standardized asset life cycle to manage your assets from its procurement till its disposal with a visual work workflow builder. All right, this would be how this would be the agenda. So the main benefits of having an asset management solution, first off, is to provide uh, central visibility, have a complete control of your IT infrastructure. So a tip, uh, a, a robust ITAM solution would give you not just control over your hardware; it gives control over your software all the cloudware that you have, any virtual machines and all that, and even the services that you consume through to main, ensure your business is running fine. So you can manage all of these and also the non-IT assets. And this includes the uh, consumables like printer, printer cartridges, the toner papers, and so on. Now, while you can maintain a, a, a very methodical system of record, the second one is to this this essentially pours over to the next benefit which is helping your organization stay compliant so when audits come when you have a methodical or a very systematic uh, uh, item uh, uh, records it helps you be uh, sail through audits a lot more easily and it minimizes your legal and security risks and uh, shields you from any penalty that it may uh, sorry incur and from there you can also see that the cost of IT spend would drastically go down because when you have complete visibility of all the items, so, uh, IT assets and the non-IT assets, you would know which, uh, uh, how much purchases have to be done, how much li compliant you are with license, whether you are under licensed, over licensed, you will have a complete uh, view of that. So it helps you optimize your asset usage and license usage and brings down the IT costs. And the final benefit is that it augments all the idle processes. So uh, uh, integrating your ITAM directly into your service desk helps your incident management, your uh, change management, your project, your releases, and your problems. Since you can directly map the assets into these processes, you can quickly see how much impact it would have on all of the uh, IT infrastructure. All right, now we saw the benefits. However, we'll see what would happen if uh, a improper item solution is in place and what what perils that might might occur when you when you do not have a proper item solution in place and for that we have today's use case zilka so zilka is a business process management organization so they are uh, going through uh, their it asset management strategy with the legacy tool and uh, ideally they do not have a proper it asset management strategy they just they are just winging it at, right now but it all came to a major chaos when their organization acquired one of their competitors. So when they acquired one of the competitors, a lot of their competitor assets had to come in and a lot of the competitors employees have to join their payroll. And this meant a deluge of assets and an influx of employees from different locations. 
So their their half is uh, no half is our um, uh, IT management asset management strategy just did not hold tight when a lot of assets suddenly came pouring in, and they faced a lot of troubles. They were not able to track their IT assets. They did not know where I, uh, assets were going on. Their costs went out of the roof. uh they 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 were not compliant with their software software licenses and they faced frequent shortages of assets so these these essentially the challenges they faced due to this whole chaos first off is that they had poor visibility of the it infrastructure their it asset inventory went haywire they were using a, a legacy tool with spreadsheets and it just did not work well when you had to um uh, toggle between different applications and this again like i mentioned earlier increased their it spend and they had unwanted it spend and uh, uh, uh due to this they also faced compliance issues which which put them in the radar of uh, having legal and security risks and which again had a lot more pressure on their it department and like i said their legacy tool was not integrated with the help desk so they had no support for other idle processes all right now how did they overcome these challenges though so they leverage service desk plus to overcome each of these challenges today we'll see how they leverage service desk plus to overcome each of these challenges one by one so first off let me show you where we are so right now this is service desk plus and the first thing that they had to do is that zilka had to do is they had to bring in all the assets to their system so they had to discover their assets the new assets that came in from different locations and for that uh, they had headed over to setup under setup you have a separate menu for probes and discovery this is this uh, menu is specially used to discover your assets click on probe so the probe would essentially uh, be used to get um, fetch asset information and send it over to your uh, system so you can create new probes by clicking on add add probe giving a name for instance for it could be for a dubai site or um, you know let's say a chennai site and choose chennai and you can add it and you know, it's worth noting over here is that uh, the probe will be working only on oss with windows server 2012 or higher or windows 8 or higher and it requires a dotnet framework 4.5 for it to execute as well once we have created the probe you can download it from here and then use the show key option over here to add that key to the probe when you are executing it and this way the asset information would be mapped to this specific probe associated with this specific site all right once they have created the probe they had to add in the credentials in their credential library the credential library is a, a repository of all the credentials needed for remote scans or remote control or any asset scans that we that might happen so you can create new credentials over here by clicking on new credentials uh choosing what type of credential credential is it is it for snmp devices is it for vmware or other servers as well give a name and the username and password the credential essentially to log in for the scan and once we have filled in the credential library we can zilka headed over to their domain scans so domain scan and network scan are two different ways of uh, discovering assets in service desk plus so under domain scan you can create uh, it essentially scans the assets into the different domains that the organization have for instance we can have we can see that there are two domains under the california branch and one under the new york branch we can create new domains over here by selecting the probe that we need for instance we can create a domain just for the hr department and the domain controller is essentially the server where the hr ad is being uh, stored so uh, i give the controller name over here let's say that it's cali01 and the credentials so once you have added the credentials over here you can also enable this checkbox to en ensure that all the software in uh, installed in those assets those details will also be fetched by the probe and added in to the uh, asset inventory all right so this is typ typically how a domain scan works and then once the uh, domain is being domain scan is configured you could click on the cog wheel over here and scan the domain next 
you can uh, next way of doing discovery is through network scan so with network scan the probe would essentially scan the network range so you can choose the ip range over here by clicking on new network you can either add the entire network choose to scan the entire network or the uh, ip addresses from certain number to certain number so, so this could be like 192 to 168 10. 10 to maybe 70. So these 60 devices would alone be scanned. And you can also exclude certain devices if needed. Again, you can you need to select a probe that would do this network scan and choose the credentials from the credential library. So we have uh, for Windows, for the Linux servers, VMware, and so on. You can add new credentials right over here from this screen as well by clicking on the plus icon. Again, just like domain scan, you can also choose enable software scan to bring in all the software assets into your uh, as uh, item inventory as well. All right. Now, Zilka had another issue. They had to bring in assets that were outside their network. For that, they leveraged the self-scan script. So if you head over to the settings and under scan script, you can leverage the self-scan executable file or scan underscore script dot sh file for Windows and Linux machines respectively. And you could run these scripts on the assets that are outside the network individually. And this script would fetch the data from the asset and send it to the probe on that site or whichever site that you need. And before you uh, be sure to know that, before you run the uh, self-scan script, click over here and uh, copy the API key listed over here and add it to your self-scan script while you're executing it. And then it would scan the machines outside your network that are not reachable by the probe and it would send in data. Now, these are the three ways that Zilka was able to discover new assets that they suddenly that they had to take care of and they brought into their inventory. Next up, they had to add new, uh, buy a lot of new resources as well or assets as well because new employees were joining in and they had to put in a lot of purchase orders and add those assets. So for that, they leveraged the integrated purchases module of Service Disk Plus. So if you click on the purchases icon in the navigation bar, you would re be redirected to the purchases module. Over here, we can see there are a list of all the purchase orders that are previously there. You can create a new purchase order by clicking on new, and you can see there is a purchase order template that fills over here. Let's say that we need to order a few HP laptops. Let's call HP NV laptops. And let's say that it's for the design team. Now, let's choose one of the vendors from the vendor details. These vendors can be added in the customization menu under setup. So let, let's choose the SAM vendor and choose a shipping address. For the uh, sake of time, let me, I'll just give a very short address over here. Once we fill the necessary details, we can choose the product type. So this could be a workstation and we can choose the HP NB. So again, all these product type and the products can be configured under the customization menu. Once I've chosen HP NB, I've, I can see that the price is already filled in. Let me add like about 10 new laptops of HP Envy for the design team. And once I click outside the box, we can see that the entire purchase order is filled. Now, this purchase order is pretty skeletal since I haven't added any shipping costs, sales tax, additional tax. But you have the complete um, uh, option to do that depending on your financial uh, needs of the organization. Once you have added that, you can add a cost center so that this purchase order would be mapped to that cost center and a crack this uh, purchase order with a general ledger code as well. Let's choose a signing authority over here and save the purchase order. Once the purchase order is saved, this, can, this purchase order, uh, we can see that the status is open. So this purchase order would be moving through approvals to, to uh, you know, this would move, go on to the higher approval, the IT director and so on. And you can configure that approval just like we saw in service request and um, incident and all that. You can configure approvals directly over here by adding a stage. And um, you can have up to five stages of approvals over here. 
So for the sake of the uh, for the sake of the demo over here, let me just approve it myself since I have the admin privileges. So once I've approved it, I can send a notification to uh, to the required person who, for instance, it could be a stakeholder like the IT director or the finance department. And once it's approved, you can directly from the uh, purchase order, you can send it, send email the vendor that this purchase order is approved and please get ready with the assets. So you can click on email the ven uh, email vendor and you get the complete email functionality within the purchase order with an external link for the vendor to access this purchase order. You can also attach this PO as a PDF and so that when this email uh, is sent to the vendor, they could use the PDF for any invoice purposes. Further, you can also directly order this PO. This would again send it, uh, send the, uh, send an order confirmation email to the vendor along with the link. Now, let's assume that the vendor has approved, you know, has taken the purchase order and has uh, shipped all the laptops, and we have received it. You can now choose once we have received the uh, assets. You can click on actions and choose to receive the items. So once you receive the items, you can either receive the entire item or you can receive partial items. So if you're receiving an entire item, just click on the checkbox over here and click receive items. Once the item is received, it would automatically be added to your asset inventory. So under the asset inventory, it would be added under workstations or unaudited workstations where you could just choose multiple assets. For instance, uh, since we added the product type as workstations, it would automatically be added to one of the various categorizations that we see over here. So under assets, we have IT, virtual hosts, and non-IT assets. And under IT assets, we have even further segregations on access points, iPad printers. All of these are completely customizable. These segregations right now come out of the box, and you can add any more categories and subcategories in this accordion menu, menu as you see fit. This again can be done in the customization menu, which we'll see at the end of the set, uh, webinar. And right now, this these workstations that we saw for the HP MV laptop would be added under workstation uh, under the workstations. We can uh, so once the domain scan or the network scan picks up these laptops as it uh, as it's in use, we can see the state of the laptops over here that it's in store and in use. So right now, the assets that we received from the purchase order would be in store. You can choose different assets and if uh, reconcile them so so that there are no duplicate records in your IT inventory. So click on two assets that are same could, could be a purchase order asset and a domain scan asset and click on reconcile and this would merge those assets with all the common information. All right. So this was how Zilka brought in new assets directly from the purchase order. Apart from that, you can also bring in assets using barcode or QR code. You can generate new code for the new assets or also for the existing assets and print them over here. Or you can also scan the vendor code's uh, uh, barcode directly with your scanner. As you scan it, it will directly be added over here and you can choose the product type under which it needs to be sorted. All right. So now we saw how you, we brought in all the assets. Let's see uh, one of these assets uh, that we that Zilker has uh, brought into their item. So let me search for one of the laptops. So when a domain scan or when a network scan happens, the probe picks up a lot of information, both hardware and software information. So uh, typically, uh, uh, the information that the probe picks up would look like this. So the details would be listed in the asset over here. And under the hardware, we can see that it has picked up the memory information, the processor, the network, the disk drive, all how much usage has happened over each drives. All of these would be added directly into the asset details from the probe. Similarly, all the software that since we enabled the software scan, all the software in every asset in that uh, would be added to its uh, to that specific asset over here. So you can have a quick view. You can just choose one asset, quickly see how much hardware is being used, how much, what are the software that's being used. You can also uh, add relationships if there are any uh, on whom is uh, who is using the asset, if there are any business services connected to it. 
and also any contracts that you have would be directly linked to these assets. So we can see that there is an annual maintenance contract for Dell uh, that we uh, that we have added earlier. And since that asset was linked to that contract, we can view that directly under this contracts tab. You can also calculate, keep an eye on the IT cost spent by key uh, with the financials tab. You can uh, check out the costs and the depreciations that happen. For instance, this is a workstation that's in use. And we can see that the purchase cost was so much and along with an operational cost. And under the depreciation tab, we can see a quick depreciation that happens uh, for, the, for its entire remaining lifetime, which is like four and a half years uh, roughly. And you can also get a quick monthly view of the depreciation as well. So in this way, you get a granular details, a complete view of all the assets that have, uh, of all the information in of the assets under separate tabs from hardware, software, the relationship it holds, the contracts it, uh, it is associated with, and its specific financials. All right. Now, Zilka had a neck, another issue right now. We mentioned that Zilka had a very poor IT asset management strategy, right? which means that they did not have a proper asset life cycle to maintain. And when they brought in the new competitors' assets and new employees, they wanted to streamline their asset life cycle and establish a standardized asset life cycle. And that, for that, they leveraged the asset life cycle builder in Service Desk Plus. So on top of these uh, tabs, we can see a separate panel which, which shows the state of the asset, which is in store, and which shows transitions. And the technician has two options over here, assign user or faulty asset. So what are these? These are the asset life cycle. <clears throat> Let's see how you can configure it and see how it mo moves the uh, asset through different states from procurement till disposal. To configure your own asset life cycle, head over to setup. Under the setup, give me a second over here. All right, so we, we are here in the setup page. Under setup, under the automation menu, we have a separate uh, item for life cycles. So we have life cycles for request problem and assets right now. So as an asset, typical asset life cycle would look like this. So we can see that it's a visual map of all the states that the asset would move through. The white boxes over here depict the states. So right now, the asset that we just saw, the Dell laptop, is an in in-store state. So from there, we can follow the arrows, which shows that it can either move to in-repair state or in-use state. However, there are green boxes over here. These green boxes are the transitions that the technician can interact with. These are the transitions that we saw in the details page of the asset. That uh, So if... Uh, when the asset is in store, a technician can choose assign user transition, then it would move the state of the asset from in store to in use. And if the technician finds the asset to be faulty, they could, uh, the, they could choose faulty asset transition and it would move the state of the asset from in store to in repair. From there, you can see that we, uh, the asset can either move to the expired status or the dispose, dispose status. So this is a small asset lifecycle that we have configured for this. And similarly, you can configure any comprehensive life, life cycles as well. Now, while you are, uh, while a technician is choosing the transitions, you can, uh, they can also configure actions to take place when they choose the transition. When we click on the transition over here, assign user, we can see there are three different stages where actions can take place before, during, and after. Now let's go this one by one, go over this one by one. So under the before stage, this transition, it, it, the actions over here is only to, uh, to decide who can access this transition. So we have the scope over here and we can see that these roles in the organization can only have only the privilege to assign this asset to a user. If, there are, if the uh, role is different for any other technician, the technician would not have the privilege to assign an asset to any user. Similarly, you can also add any criteria based on which the transition would appear to those roles again. This criteria again is dependent on all the details that we saw in the details space. This includes the hardware details, the software details, 
you know, the current book value, everything. If you can choose any of those details and add a nested condition list, and depending on those conditions, the transition will be visible. Next up is the during stage. The during stage is essentially to ensure that the information is perfect before it moves on to the next state. For instance, when the technician clicks on assign user and if no user is assigned before it moves on to the in use state, your item, your asset inventory would be full of holes. So to avoid that, the during stage mandates fields you can choose any mandatory field that needs to be filled before the technician uh, the asset moves to the next state and you can also add a rule set when based on a condition certain field update value would happen so basically when you click on the uh, as asset transition certain uh, pop up windows would show up showing that these information need be need to be filled for the technician and then only the uh, asset would move to the next state the after state is to trigger actions after it moves on to the next state. So when the tech, uh, when the asset moves from in store to in use, once it reaches the in use state, certain actions would be triggered. So for we have we can see over here a notification. We have created a notification over here that the reporting manager for the team member would be notified that an asset has been allocated to their team member. Uh, so similarly, you can configure that by clicking on the rule set over here. You can choose any criteria based on the details that we saw in the details section and you can either configure a notification you can send a notification or uh, like we can see that there are two notifications already one for it director and one for manager similarly you can configure any new notifications or send out a run a custom function or trigger a webhook and this is how you can configure a complete asset life cycle now to create a new life cycle, you can head over to the previous menu, um, which is the asset life cycle, where you have the option to create a new life cycle. Give, give a name for the uh, life cycle. For instance, let ha let's have a life cycle for smartphones. And we need to choose to which more sub module it applies to, which means to which product type. So this since this is a life cycle for only smartphones, let's choose that this life cycle applies to smartphones and click on next. Then we'll be redirected to the canvas. In this empty canvas, we can, from the right-hand panel, we need to drag the states in on in the order in which it needs to be at, uh, it needs to be mapped. So we can first add the in-store state, and from there, let's assume that it moves on to in-use state and in-repair state. You can to give a direction to this uh, life cycle, drag. Uh, the arrow from one of the ports and connect it to the asset state. So from in-store state, it can either move to in-use or in-repair depending on the transitions that the technician clicks. So these transitions can be configured by clicking on the red boxes. For instance, for, for in-repair, click on the transition. The Let's create one over here for that. It's a faulty asset. And for in-use, we can assign a user. So let's click on the transition assign user. All right. So once we have configured the transition, you can configure the actions that need to be executed by clicking on the transition and then the same way that we saw earlier before, during, after. So it's very simple to create a visual life cycle that standardizes your asset management strategy across all the different locations of your business. So you, you, you might have branches around the world and yet all your entire asset management strategy would be uniform. And this is when Zilker, when they had new employees joining their IT team, this essentially the asset lifecycle also guided them through their asset management strategy. For instance, we can see over here that the technician can do only two actions. Either the technician can assign a user or choose that the asset is faulty. The technician cannot do anything else in this page. So it essentially guides the technician, uh, new technicians into uh, uh, to the organization's way of doing things without making any human errors. All right. And that is how Zilker standardized their asset life cycles. Next up, they had to bring, they had, they faced shortage of assets. So for that, they leveraged the asset replenishment. So when new asset, when new people came in, when new employees joined into the organization, they had they 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 were quite uh, they they were left empty-handed when they had to quickly uh, you know uh, allocate 
frequently used assets to all many departments. So these frequently used assets can be like keyboard, mouse, the routers on new locations, smartphones, and so on. So uh, this is just, uh, just for the site in California. Similarly, you can choose asset replenishment configurations in different sites. And you can create a new asset uh, replenishment, replenishment con configuration by clicking on the new uh, button over here and choosing the product type. So let's say that we need a replenishment reminder for switches. So let's say that LAN access switches, when they, are, when they go down certain level, for instance, if they are below five, a notification would be sent to the asset manager. So we can see that right now the in-store count is zero, which is bad, and they need to bring in new purchase orders for the uh, LAN access switches for and add it to the asset inventory. All right. And next up, they were sending out loans. So Zilker had multiple sales teams working in different locations, and they had to loan assets to them. And earlier, they were not able to track these loaned assets since they did not have any provision in their previous item too. But over here, they have a separate section for loaned assets. Under asset loan, when you click on loanable assets, you can mark all the assets that are that are eligible for uh, giving it off to loan. So you can choose mark loanable assets. It would show up all the assets in your inventory. You can check all the boxes and then uh, these would be added into your loan uh, loanable assets inventory. And you can click on new loan when, uh, when you have to loan it to someone. For instance, for, to loan an iPhone, uh, just type in the name and we can add in this iPhone name. Choose the date in from which, uh, from when to when uh, the loan would be extended. And then either you can loan it to an entire department. If it's a workstation, if it's a server, you can loan it to an entire department or just to certain users over here. Once you have loaned it, all these loans would be uh, can be tracked in the loan registry. So that we can see that there are three loans that are ongoing right now and the expiry for uh, these three loans can be tracked over here. When it nears expiry, a notification would be sent to that asset manager. And by clicking on the cog wheel, they can either extend the loan or you can add new assets to the pre-existing loans as well. Apart from that, Zilker also leveraged the asset groups. So when they have, they realized that they had to, um, you know, uh, upgrade the uh, old old generation win, uh, machines uh, frequently. So for that, they created new assets. For instance, to uh, quickly upgrade all the Windows machines, they created a new group called Windows Machines. So this would list all the machines that are running the Windows OS so that they could quickly do any actions, any group actions for these machines alone. So for to create a new group, they just click on the plus icon. And you can add a static group and choose assets manually, or you can add a dynamic group and choose the criteria. For instance, like for Windows OS, uh, just choose that the OS needs to be Windows 7. And you can show, uh, add the name to be Windows 7 Machines Group and click on Save. And then an uh, asset list would be, a uh, group would be created with a dynamic group tag that would list all the machines in the organization with Windows 7. All right. And that's how Zilker was able to get a grip on their assets, which are like either uh, these included the consumables, the asset loans, and they were also able to group these assets. Now, let's see where we are. So we first saw different ways where we brought in the assets, either through purchase orders or through the discovery methods. Then we saw how you could build an asset inventory from different in different categories. This include non-IT, IT, and we also saw how you could add asset groups and, and have a separate inventory for loanable assets and so on. Now let's see. We are in the fourth section where we Zilker is facing issues with their license compliance for their software. So let's check out software uh, asset management. So under asset management, we have software. Over here, when you click on scan software, it lists all the software that are available in the enterprise, that are running in your enterprise. When you open one of these software, you get all the information, such as whether it's under licensed, over licensed, whether it's compliant and so on. You can also see the license agreements that are involved with it directly over here and all the installations that this laptop or that the software is running on. 
So we can see that the Adobe 11 is running on Jainra's workstation. And uh, you can also uh, keep track of the usage. Now, the key, key thing to keep track uh, to stay compliant that help Zilker especially is that under the licenses tab, you can add any licenses that you have for the uh, for the specific software and you can allocate it directly to all of the uh, uh, assets that are running under licensed software, sorry, unlicensed software. So you can click on the allocate icon over here and when you can choose the asset that needs to be allocated and click on allocate license. And we can quickly see that the compliance type has turned into green, showing that it's compliant now. And in this way, Zilka was able to stay compliant with all their assets. You can also add new software licenses under the software license tab. You can import directly from the CSV or click on manually add it from new software license option. Choose the manufacturer that needs to be added. For instance, it could be an antivirus software choose choose the software name choose what type of asset li license type is it you can add any type of licenses by clicking on the plus icon or from the customization menu as well and once you have added the vendor and the purchase cost you can save it and uh, along with the license key and it would get listed over here similarly you can also add license agreements so license agreements are especially with vendors and this would uh, typically look uh, look like this, where you can add an uh, active date and expiry date of the agreement, an agreement number, the purchase order in which it came, and you can directly associate existing licenses to the asset agreement, so license agreement. So you can choose from which site it needs to be and choose these asset, uh, licenses that can be added directly to the agreement. And once the agreement is nearing expiry, you can choose which user need to be notified along with the technician and the date uh, days before uh, which the uh, notification needs to be sent. And therefore, this helped Zilka to stay compliant with their software licenses as well. So now they've taken care of their hardware and software and any of the web, uh, cloudware that they were using. All right. Now let's see where we are. So we saw how with software asset management they were able to uh, stay compliant. Next, they to for the next step in building their uh, resilient strategy is to build CI relationships and how it helped support other idle processes. So for this, they leverage the integrated CMDB module. So with the CMDB module. Zilka was able to build CI relationships and quickly predict or not predict more like foresee the impact that would happen when and uh, when a certain CI would go down. For instance, Zilker had to upgrade their email services because new new asset infrastructure was coming in and new teams are joining in. So they quickly checked the email service relationships by clicking on the business views and we are redirected to a relationship map. So we can see the, uh, which teams are currently using the email services, which server the email service is hosted on, and who which uh, back uh, who is enabling a backup service for the email as well. And this quickly gives you an idea on whom would be affected the most, which asset is the vulnerable one, and which needs to be taken care of while implementing this change. This asset can directly be added to any of the change, incident, problem, project, and release modules directly integrated in your service desk. Similarly, you can add new business views by clicking on new business view, select a base CI. For instance, if they are upgrading a data center, a change where they upgrade a data center, choose the data center as the base CI. Let's say the business view, uh, view name is for the USDC and click on next. Once we are in this uh, canvas, we can we can add any relationships that the data center would, ha would, would have. So right now we have added a quick relationship over here by clicking on the plus icon and saying that this data center is currently managed and is depends on Gregory Homes. By clicking on custom relationships, we, we can choose any of the relationship types. This again, this relationship type can be added in the customization menu. And these relationships can be chosen. For instance, this we can choose that this data center is backed up by 
either a person who is a CI or we can even choose any of the departments or another data or, or another server where the backup happens. So once we choose that, it would appear in the uh, relationship map like this. So in this way, you could create sections of CI uh, relationship maps that quickly shows your business views and helps you predict the impact that would it that uh, any change or any major overhaul that you do to your IT infrastructure. Similarly, you can also see the relationship map for specific assets. So under the CMDB, we can see just like the IT, uh, just like the asset inventory that there is an accordion menu. And uh, we can see like, for instance, add CIs to specific categories. Under computer, we have server and workstation. And for server, we have two servers. So to create, we can uh, check open these servers and check their relationship map to quickly see who, uh, where, which data center it's backed up by and which services this server is hosting. So similarly, you can also see the relationship maps for specific CIs as well. You can add new CIs to the CMDB by clicking on new, by click or clicking on mark as CIs, choosing a module from which the CI would be fetched, for instance, like the asset module, and choosing a, which type of assets need to be fetched in, like uh, if it's a Windows workstation and so on. Once you click next, it would show all the Windows laptops that uh, or workstations that the asset inventory has. We have around 171 and you can choose which needs to be added as a CI to the CMDB and you can confirm it. And that's how you, with the with an integrated CI, CMDB, it would help your asset management strategy in any changes, like any uh, overhaul or any major change that you're overtaking or any projects that you're going through. So you can, uh, finally, this helped Zilka to overcome, the, uh, to establish uh, a, a complete view when they are uh, when they are um, implementing any project for their infrastructure. Finally, Zilka needed a bird's eye view of what is happening in their assets or to their assets in their organization. For that, they leveraged the dashboards. We have seen dashboards in incidents, service requests, change, release, and so on. Similarly, you have a dedicated dashboard for assets as well. You can choose different dashboards under the drop-down menu at, uh, atop all these widgets. And you can also customize the widgets by clicking on the edit icon. You can choose uh, from the various widgets that are all available, or you can also create new reports and give them access to dashboards. So these widgets include like the purchase orders by due date, the workstations, how many workstations are running on which OS, you get a quick table summary of all the assets that you have, the over licensed, under licensed applications, and the product types that are populated in different sites around the world. So you get a complete visual uh, data of all the uh, applications, sorry, all the asset information that you have. This is again, this data is real time and you can configure uh, how long the refresh frequency is so that you get new new data, you get uh, live data all the time. Similar to asset dashboard, uh, Zilka also kept an eye on their software dashboard and quickly saw when they were compliant, when they were not compliant, and which licenses they were, which were unused, how many license agreement are nearing expiry and so on with the software dashboard. Finally, they leverage the reports module to gain insights on assets. For instance, under the reports, we have over 200 canned reports and dedicated reports for, for instance, for asset loans, which would quickly in, a, uh, in an instant would generate a tabular uh, report. For instance, we have about four assets that are uh, in that are in currently in loan, and this can be uh, uh, quickly printed or exported into different formats as well. And these reports can be added as a widget in the dashboard by toggling this access to dashboard menu, uh, sorry, uh, toggle switch. Similarly, you have other reports for software, for workstation summary, and specific for assets as well. So with that, Zilkar was able to get a wholesome idea of all the things that they were going, uh, that they were facing. And they essentially overcame all their challenges. 
first up the visibility challenge that they faced, then the compliance issue that they had, then they were able to keep track of their asset costs with, again, with compliant, uh, staying compliant and seeing the cost of financials of the asset right within the asset details page and getting quick reports on where the assets are. Then finally, with the CMDB module, they were also able to give, augment their change, their incident, their product, uh, project management uh, practices directly. So this is how Zilker built a resilient IT asset management strategy for their organization. So a quick recap for, the, for today's session. We saw multiple ways to discover assets using domain scan, network scan, and self-scan scripts. And we, all, and we saw how you could configure probes as well. Next, we saw how you could classify assets into different categories and how you could implement asset loaning uh, in, in its specific section as well. Then we saw how you could have maintain compliance with software licenses and how and uh, how you could add new software agreement uh, licenses and uh, license agreements and directly allocate it to any of the uh, installations where it's running an unlicensed software. Again, we all, next we saw how with an asset lifecycle builder, Zilka was able to uh, establish a standardized asset lifecycle for all their sites in their organization. And finally, with the CMDB, we saw how they could quickly do an impact analysis for any of the projects or any changes or any problems that they're facing and get a, a, a clear idea of their entire infrastructure. And that's been it for today's session, folks. I hope it's been a pretty informative for every one of you. Thank you for joining in, everyone. It's been wonderful to do, it, to do this masterclass to all of you this entire season from February. And it's been great. Uh, I hope to see you all in the next season as well. And uh, we might be uh, bringing in new sessions as well. So if you have any ideas on what topics that you'd like to see in future sessions, uh, drop in an email to hello at servicedeskplus.com. We'll be happy to uh, create new sessions for you people. And uh, if you have any more uh, doubts, again, you can uh, uh, leverage the product videos that we have. We con continuously add in more product videos to our YouTube channel. You can also uh, uh, leverage the uh, community, the pit stop community, which is buzzing with activity at all time. I'm pretty sure you're aware of the admin guide and the release notes that we quickly, uh, that we always send out. All right, folks, uh, hope you all stay safe. It's been a wonderful session and it's been a wonderful see, see you all soon. Bye-bye.